Thank you. Okay, back on stage. Hello again. One, two, one, two, three. yeah, okay. Uh, so I will be talking about, oh, sorry. Uh, here it is. I will be talking about kconfig frontends, which is a packaging of the kconfig parser and frontends. So what is kconfig first? I, I hope you guys know about it. <laughs> okay, so kconfig is a, a language, a description language, where, which is highly used in the Linux kernel, since it, uh, it is uh, originated in the Linux kernel. It's a description language where you say uh, what options you have, what types there are, which prompt uh, you want to show the user, and stuff like that. It's a very simple syntax and grammar. It could even be parsed with a shell script, or I, have a, I even know someone who has done a kconfig parser in PHP. Yeah, no, don't laugh. <laughs> uh, there is a limited number of types, Boolean three states. Well, Booleans are only three states which are uh, constrained to yes or no. Strings, which can be a plain string or an integer. There is dependency tracking, which means you can express uh, the dependency between two variables, such as uh, a variable depends on another, or a variable will force another variable to be set. And it is uh, I18N ready, internationalization ready. You can localize the messages uh, in the, the prompt and the help text in the kconfig language. It's mostly ready. The infrastructure is here. Yes, that's the point of uh, internalization and localization. So you can have the prompt written. Okay. So here is an example. You have a, a config option that is called foo, which is of type boolean. And you will show the prompt foo device to the user. And there is a help text which is super for full device, just an example. And everything that is in blue can be localized. Uh, everything that is in uh, red. <laughs> top, top. Everything that is in red is uh, a variable or a config option. And everything in black is uh, um, keywords. So this first one is very simple. This one is a bit more complex. It's a config foo bar. OK, too bad for the red. Uh, the blue wins. This is a Boolean. And the prompt is put just beside the type. It's a shorthand for bool and prompt. Well, you can just put the prompt at. I don't like this. I prefer this, but it's personal preference. And here, you express a dependency that this option foo bar will only be visible if Option foo is first set. And if foo bar is set, you will select generic bar. That is, you will force generic bar to be set as well. And this is a blind option. There is no prompt. It's a, just a Boolean. This construct can be very useful if you have uh, a common infrastructure, such as the clock infrastructure, and you have many drivers that, you, that want to use the clock infrastructure. So you have all the options of the driver, the option of all drivers select the clock framework, and it will be compiled in. OK, very simple. Ah. So once you have your, d yes, sorry. Uh, uh, does the space are uh, meaningful? Oh, right. Spaces, uh, they are mostly meaningful. What you have here is. You can do whatever you want here, space, tabs, whatever. Usually in the Linux kernel, it's one tab. Uh, here it's just four spaces because I prefer whatever. The only way, the only place where spaces are meaningful is here, the start of the help text. You just have help. If there is no end help, the help can be multi-line. So the help ends. As at the first line, which is not indented the same way as the first line. Tricky. And a space is equal, uh, sorry, a tabulation is equal eight spaces. So you can have a tabulation here and eight spaces below, it is the same. 
So once you have described your options, you want to present them to the user. There are five frontends. The first conf is uh, line-driven um, uh, frontend, which you get when you run make all config, make uh, run the config, make all all mod config or yes config, or if you run make config. Um, you have got mconf and nconf, which are curses based, which you get when you call make menu config or make end config. The Qt based frontend, which you get when you run make x config, and the gtk based frontend, which you get when you run make g config. And there are two, uh, two examples with the previous uh, description. So, just notice here, there is something that is going to change. We are speaking of the front ends of, we are speaking of the front ends of kconfig, and now we are speaking of kconfig front ends the package. So, we've seen with time that kconfig has migrated out of the Linux kernel and is being used with a lot of packages, uh, such as uh, Busybox, UCDPC, which use uh, it at, uh, as their uh, configuration infrastructure. Uh, we have some build systems, such as Buildroot, which Thomas will be uh, speaking about uh, after me. PTXD, WRT, cross Engine, which are using uh, kconfig frontends. There are patches for QMU to be configured, for QMU to be configured with uh, kconfig instead of the dat slash configure flags. Uh, the patches have been posted to the QMU mailing list. I'm not sure if they have been applied yet. It was part of a GSOC. Uh, Kconfig frontend is meant to make it easy for the project, those ones, to use Kconfig and offload the maintenance burden of uh, yeah, sorry uh, of uh, getting new version of Kconfig, fixing bugs and stuff like that. So it's a mean to uh, push development of kconfig upstream in the Linux kernel and have an easy way to retrieve this kconfig and put it in the uh, project infrastructure as is. It's not yet complete. It's just a goal. For now, it's not really possible as is. Even I do not use it in cross Energy yet. So kconfig frontend is uh, packaged using the auto tools. So you have a dot slash configure make make install dance. <coughs> Sorry. Uh, the package generates a library which uh, bundles the parser. You can have a shared library or a static library, whatever you want. Both or any one of, the, uh, of them. It builds all the five frontends which are linked to the parser library. So in the end, we can have separate packages, one for the library and one for the packages. So you can build your own frontend on, that, on the library. Uh, I will not guarantee that the API is stable. In the end, it should be. Probably it is, but uh, there is no guarantee yet. And it also builds and installs a few utilities, diff to diff2.config files. You can use the standard diff, but this one will uh, display the output in a meaningful way for .config files. You can merge two or more .config files. You can tweak them, that is, say this option, I want to enable it, or to disable it, or to undefined it, or to set it to such value. And finally, you have the get text, which will extract the prompt and help text from the kconfig files and generate .po files, which you can uh, edit to localize your uh, prompt and help uh, entries. Uh, unfortunately, diff, merge, and get text are already existent on your system. So when, uh, oh, sorry. <laughs> When we install the kconfig uh, frontends and utilities, they all get prefixed with kconfig dash, so there is no name clashing with existing binaries. Just if you want to build an RPM-based uh, package of kconfig frontends, the RPM default rules forces the prefix to be the empty string, so be careful. 
Uh, there was there is a guy that tried that and he uh, almost uh, overwrote uh, his uh, system diff with the kconfig diff. <laughs> well, it's not too bad. It's just diff and merge. But yeah, uh, you can optionally build each frontend. You can select which one you want and don't want. By default, configure will try to see if uh, you have the required libraries and will build or not build uh, the front ends depending if you have the Qt development files, you will have Qconf, but if you are missing the GTK development files, we, you will be missing Gconf by default. If you force a config, if you force a front end, configure will bail out if you do not have the prerequisites. Um, the Kconfig language will always prefix all config options with this string, config underscore, which is done in the Linux kernel. With Kconfig frontends, you can override the default. The default is Kconfig underscore, but you can say, no, I want br2 underscore. Or you, want, you can say, no, I want the empty string, and I want all my options to be named as they appear in the Kconfig files. And you can set the default root menu which you can override in your config files with a main menu, the main menu directive. Um, it builds on Linux, Seguin, and some BSDs. So I do not have a BSD system at home. Some people have sent patches to make it work. So I try to make it work in all these environments. Um, Someone is working on making it work on MingW that is running as a native Windows application too. Currently, you need Sigwin and the next server in Windows if you want to run the, front, the graphical frontends. So maybe I can show a few demo or if you have questions. Oh, good question. <laughs> um, that's a good question. It's uh, hosted at home. <laughs> I'm a fan of self-hosting. Sorry? <laughs> if you have a USB key, I can clone it for you. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, no. Okay, the question is, will kconfig be removed from the Linux kernel sources to rely on kconfig frontends? The answer is no. I don't want it to happen for the foreseeable future. No, eventually, if the kernel people approach me and say, oh, this is the official release, I will accept it, but I will not force it. Because I want, for now, kconfig to be still maintained in the Linux, config, uh, in the Linux uh, development process. I want to. Con I still consider Linux to be the upstream of kconfig. Okay, sorry, I do not have the network. I have already read them yesterday. Hopefully they did not change. <laughs> okay. OK, so is the currently official home of the project. And you will find the Git tree uh, listed below. Um, somewhere on the page. Oh yeah, get the source. Yes, of course. Um, and you can browse the repository online. And this is actually an HTTP 
uh, repository, which you can also clone with the Git uh, with Git uh, the Git protocol. Sorry. Okay. <laughs> okay. Keep your private joke for yourself. <laughs> Okay, just a second. It works. Okay, uh, that's something we already discussed together, but I wanted to uh, see if there was any update on that on that thing. Most of the um, uh, tools that use kconfig, so you name them like build root, ptxd, store the kernel, or uh, I, I learned that uh, QEMU is going to uh, move to it apparently. Usually they don't want to depend on something else to be able to start their configuration utility. That's a problem we already discussed while thinking about I knew, I knew <laughs> integrate kconfig front ends in, 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 in build root, for example. What is your, um, well, your thinking moving forward to solve this, this problem and to actually make kconfig front ends useful? Should it be like packaged by distribution so that build root can just say, just like we depend on, on currently on NCURS, we would depend on kconfig front ends to be installed in, in, the, in the system um, by the user or should we download it when we run first time make mini config? But that sounds like a lot of hassle. Um, so, w what's your plan? Okay, uh, I have no final plan on that. Uh, I have some ideas. The first is, uh, as you said, if it was packaged by distribution and widely distributed by distributions, uh, let's say the main ones, Debian, Fedora, Sius, and uh, maybe Slackware and stuff like that, uh, the main distributions that would cover 90% uh, of uh, the installation base. Maybe we can have uh, this project depend on the host kconfig frontends. Uh, I don't think this will happen in uh, uh, shortly uh, for two reasons. First, because I'm not pushing for that to happen. Uh, and, because, and I'm not pushing for that because kconfig is not stable. As you know well, there are still very um, uh, some bugs in kconfig that are hard to understand and solve. <laughs> I'm still working on yours. <laughs> um, the, the alternate way is to provide a make file fragments that would play the role of the of dot slash configure, which is the upper layer build system such as build root would export a few variables. Um, this would be a contract, an API. Where you would say my compiler is this, my uh, uh, LD library pass is this, or stuff like that, or my library pass. Sorry, um, that make file would play the role of that slash configure in a static way, like it is done currently in cross in a build root or in the Linux kernel. Just try to ex extract this so you, you could use it as a drop-in replacement of what you had pre previously. When I mean when updating, of course, migrating to kconfig frontends will need some changes. Would need some changes. Okay, but then would we be copying the source code of kconfig frontends into build root, or would we have to download that uh, the first time the user runs make menu config? Well, I would say it would be up to you because if the that uh, make file fragment would exist, whether you copy it and update when you want, which would be up to you or download the latest version or a released version would be up to the project to choose. If it's easier for you to bundle it and not require the network from start, or uh, decide to use the latest version and always get a d run a wget on the error, I, I, I don't think I don't think the second solution would be the best. I think it would be, be better to just drop the source files in your project. Um, okay, I've got one minute left, so I don't think I'm going to do a lot of demonstration. Maybe just a little one. If you have other, other questions. Thomas, not you. Okay, just uh, okay. Uh, there, there is just one more yes. thing I wanted um, to say. You come later after. Uh, I've, the kconfig uh, sources are 
not really well organized in the Linux kernel. Everything is in uh, a single uh, repo in single directory. In Kconfig frontends, I've separated it in different uh, categories. We have the frontends, we have the libraries. Uh, for example, in frontends, we have uh, one one directory for each frontend, and uh, for the libraries, we have uh, uh, there are th actually three libraries in Kconfig. It's a parser, uh, something to deal with the images for the GUI frontends, and uh, the Lex dialog for menu config. Yes? Um, I always found that the search uh, capabilities in uh, in the kernel, uh, such as uh, make menu config, uh, were not uh, really uh, convenient. Uh, sometimes you get a single line which is uh, more than one kilobyte long. Uh, uh, you have to scroll it, uh, and uh, it's very hard to to search in this. Are, are there any goals to uh, to improve on this? Uh, well, first, when you search, you can search for a regexp. Okay. Did you know that? No. Okay. So you can search for a regexp. Okay, so you can sort. Uh, you can uh, have a, a very short uh, PCI, which would match a lot of stuff. And if you just want config underscore PCI, you just write PCI dollar, and it would just find you config PCI. Okay. But anyway, the dependencies are sometimes very, very yeah. long. This is another problem, uh, which uh, is how to display the result of the search. Mm. Uh, I haven't worked on this. I've seen some patches uh, flying by. What, when you go to the help of a config option, it's quite nice, but when you have the result of the search, it's not nice. <laughs> so my expectation is the search is just uh, 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 the first stop to getting to use the config option you're interested in. And there is now the jump labels in the K as there is in the Linux channel, there are jump lab labels in the mm -hmm. kconfig where it just uh, eats the uh, number of the config options you, you're interested okay. in and you directly jump to it. Mm -hmm. Instead of remembering, oh, which menu is it, third level of submenu, you can jump to the menu, to but the configuration. I, I, um, I really think that the, the most grief I have against the, the result of the search is uh, the very long uh, single line. Because uh, when you see uh, selected by, uh, you have a long list of uh, A, N, B, N, C, or A, N, C, A, N, D, or, uh, and it's very long. Maybe yes. just a splitting on uh, multiple lines, I, I don't know. I, I can't propose anything uh, myself to improve, I could say, but um, I was wondering if some... Uh, uh, I don't think uh, there is a nice solution to this problem, uh, because internally uh, the dependencies are, uh, are described in a linked list of... Uh, no, not in a linked list, but in a uh, recursive structure, which is called expression, and you have different types of expression, uh, a boolean, mm -hmm. uh, and expression, which is another expression and an expression, uh, an equal expression, which is expression equal, mm -hmm. and recursively this is constructed. Okay. So the only way I think of displaying this information would be to dump the tree structure, mm -hmm. which would be awful on terminals that have a limited number of lines. <laughs> Well, it, it would not be worse than uh, right now because uh, when you have only 80 yeah. columns and uh, you have uh, 1,000 characters yeah. on the same um, uh, on a single line, it's very hard to scroll to the end, for example. Yes, mm. yes, I know. <laughs> <laughs> for sure. Okay. okay so my you. time is uh, off uh, by more than a few minutes. Thank you very much. Um,